Okay, welcome everybody. We're just on two o'clock London time. Um, Simon here again. I can see a few of you back that were with me in the last session with David Paul, which is great. Great to see you back. Hope you had time for a quick coffee. I got mine. And we are moving straight on ahead with our next session. We're going to be speeding up quite a bit uh, from the, the content of the last session was much was, was about building a portfolio of shares uh, and, and being patient uh, in the markets. In this next session, we're going to be looking at more sort of uh, shorter term trades. Um, we're looking at the live markets as well. We've got Patrick Manelli from Tickmill here to uh, walk us through his trade planning and uh, how he goes about trading the open session uh, for the US market. So the S&P opening in just under 30 minutes and uh, he'll be telling us about trading in particular the micro e-mini futures uh, on the S&P. Uh, there's uh, a few features of, of these products if you've not traded them before. Um, Patrick will do a much better job than I am of explaining why they might suit you um, as a smaller retail trader and some of the features of how they behave and how you can um, use a, a particular strategy which has helped his followers. Um, I think some of them even quadrupled their account in just this year alone. They've been following just for a few months. So Patrick works as, as, as a trading mentor uh, and a coach um, and, and is a, a, a terrific person to, to follow online. If nothing else, you, you'll see him uh, on, on LinkedIn um, posting live trades all the time. So uh, Patrick and I worked together as well um, uh, many years ago, so it's been nice just catching up in the green room. Uh, and I'm really pleased that he's here uh, today for this session. So we, we, we're turning the webcams off because we want to focus uh, on, on the charts. Uh, there are a few slides um, that, we'll, that we'll get through first. Uh, and again, as always, uh, use that chat box uh, to let us know that you're here and that you can see and you can hear okay. Um, the only problem we sometimes have with this platform is that it might freeze. Uh, it, it seems to be okay today, but if it does happen to you, uh, the best uh, immediate solution is to try just to refresh the browser using the refresh uh, up at the top left hand corner. So great, Patrick, I can hear you there. I think the mic, the mic must be on, which is great. So welcome. Uh, to the webinar and thank you for joining us. Um, we're now looking at your screen, so um, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about how you got into trading uh, very quickly, Simon. We got yeah, I've got, a, uh, I've got a slide all set up for that, Simon. Um, um, well, welcome everyone to, um, to today's session. Uh, what I'm looking to achieve today is basically introduce you to the e-mini and e-micro S&P contracts and specifically how I use market internals to consistently profit in trading these instruments. Uh, I'll be introducing you today to the instrument structure and the advantages along with highlighting some of those unique market mechanics that really enhance the trading information for these products. I will also introduce you to my core strategy for trading the e-minis and demonstrate again how you can consistently use my pre-market analysis to reap consistent returns from the market. So for those of you who are joining me for the first time, a brief introduction to myself after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was fo focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune, sometimes quite literally overnight in the markets, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I basically began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. 
Most importantly, though, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you truly embrace the fact that trading is essentially a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. From 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I am a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide technical trade setups for three to five markets that I'm actively tracking. And these are delivered in a video format through the Ticknell Trading View account. I also run Ticknell's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group and the Ticknell Futures Telegram group, both of which I will provide more details about towards the end of the presentation. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's material. Firstly, I want to explain what the e-mini uh, S&P Futures contract is. The e-mini or the E-minis or the SPOOs is a futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. It's traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME, via their Globex electronic trading platform. Trading is 23 and a half hours a day, five days a week, using the contract symbol ES. E-mini contracts are available on a wide range of US stock market indices, commodities, and currencies. However, when traders refer to the E-mini or the SPOOs, they are generally referring to the most important contract of them all, the one that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. E-mini S&P futures, e futures were originally uh, launched in September 1997 to attract non-professional investors into trading index futures. Previously, the only game in town had been the large S&P contract, but it had just become too expensive for the little guy to trade. So the CME created the E-mini contract which was essentially one fifth the size of the large S&P 500 contract and required, most importantly, only one fifth of the margin. The E-mini became a huge success, not only with non-professional traders, but with professionals too. And so the E-mini micro futures contract, which is the same as the regular S&P 500 E-mini contract in every, in every respect, except it's one tenth of the size. That is each one point move in the S&P 500 index is worth $5 per micro e-mini contract compared to $50 for the e-mini contract. And the margin to trade the e-micro contract, most importantly, is one-tenth the size. So what are the benefits? Well, it's equally easy to go long or short. You either buy or sell the current e-mini contract and there's no uptick rule. It's a 24-hour trading venue, which makes the e-mini attractive to traders around the world. Overnight moves in related equity markets like the DAX or the FTSE can be played with one trading vehicle. It's a level playing field insofar as the Globex electronic trading platform means that large and small traders have equal access to the market and trades are executed in the order they're received. Unlike the pit traded futures or equities of old, there are no more backroom games being played. It's got a tight bid ask spread because there's so much volume traded through the E-mini that the difference between the bid and the R spread is only ever one tick or 0.25 index points, which is the minimum market movement. It's volatile, yes, but it's not unmanageable. The E-mini is active every day, which gives the day trader plenty of opportunity to trade. Remember, it's pretty difficult to trade a sleepy market. 
But the e-mini volatility, uh, as and when it does occur, is manageable, except potentially around large geopolitical events, or for example, like tonight's FOMC or the, the non-farm payrolls number, where the data is, uh, comes out uh, way out of uh, way out of that which was expected to be released. Most importantly for uh, for this product it are the low brokerage commissions for trading the contracts. They actually continue to fall. This excludes exchange clearing and regulatory fees. And when you factor those in, your round trip or your in and out brokerage commission is very attractive. It's got a low margin requirement. Uh, to open a day trading position with Tickmill, you only require $1,000 to open a micro account. It's got a lower tax rate than trading Forex or stocks. Income from trading e-mini futures is actually taxed as a capital gain. So now we understand the instrument and the trading venue, I want to demonstrate some of its unique aspects. The fact that the e-mini is a derivative of the S&P 500 allows us to access some unique information commonly referred to as market internals. Market internals are often compared to the instrument dashboard on a car, giving indication of performance and alerting the driver to any issues occurring under the hood. So let's take a look a little bit more closely at what market internals are and how we can incorporate them into a consistent trading strategy. Firstly, volume. As a unique feature of trading the exchange traded derivative, as opposed to the contract for difference in Forex, volume data in Forex is notoriously incomplete. There is no central Forex exchange and the banks who dominate Forex trading don't share volume data in real time. However, we get a true reflection of actual volume, which is shared directly by the CME and it is available to all market participants in real time. I use volume as a tool to confirm breakouts and opportunities to fade the markets. Spikes in volume will often be accompanied by intraday profit taking. The next market internal I use on a daily basis is the New York Stock Exchange tick index. This gives us the relationship of stocks ticking up versus stocks ticking down. Tick is an extremely useful tool for intraday traders. For example, if there are 3,000 stocks trading on the New York Stock Exchange and 1,500 trade higher from the previous price and 500 trade lower, then the, the tick price will read plus 1,000. When using the tick, we are looking for extremes to enter or exit trades. Tick readings of plus 1,000 or minus 1,000 are considered very strong as we typically trade between 600, plus 600 and minus 600 most of the time on the New York Stock Exchange. Tick readings within the 400 tick bracket in, indicate chop and so we want to ignore them. On a range day, we can look to fade tick extremes. I apply a moving average so that I can easily see the tick distribution and the trend for the day. When we get a high tick and a high in price at the exact same time, this more often than not indicates the high of the day. When a high tick prints without a simultaneous high price, we can continue to make new highs until a new high tick is reached. And the reverse is true for low ticks followed by new lows. The next tool is the advanced decline line or the AD line for short. This indicator tells us the net sum of advancing stocks minus declining stocks. There are roughly 3,000 stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange and 3,000 on the NASDAQ. An AD line reading of plus 1,500 is very bullish and a reading of, of 2,000 is extremely bullish. On the flip side, negative 1,500 and below is bearish and readings below negative 2,000 are extremely bearish. These extreme readings are often indicative of trend days where once the market opens, it just continues to trend in one direction all the way into the close. We look to the AD line in conjunction with the breadth ratio to confirm these trend days. For example, a day with 2,500 advancing stocks and only 500 declining stocks would yield a net positive of 2,000, which is an extremely bullish reading. It would take a large market catalyst to shift the market direction with such a bullish reading. If on the open, we continue to see the AD line moving plus 500, plus 700, plus 900, this is a sign of market strength. If, however, the market is moving higher, but the AD line is moving lower, a divergence has occurred and could be a sign of a market turn. Next, we have the breadth volume ratio, composed of volume flowing into up stocks versus volume flowing into down stocks. The breadth ratio is expressed as up volume minus down volume. 
This reading is important in relation to where it has been, especially where we are now compared to where we opened on the day. For example, if at 10 a.m. we have 10 million shares moving up and 5 million shares moving down, the resulting breadth ratio is 2 to 1 positive, 10 million versus, uh, minus the 5 million. Twice as much volume flowing into up stocks as down stocks. If at 10.30 a.m. the market has sold off, but we now have a breadth ratio of 3 to 1 positive, this is a signal that the markets are actually becoming stronger and it's time to look for a pullback to buy for a long. Last but by no means least, we have the cumulative delta. This is a cornerstone of order flow analysis. Cumulative delta summarizes the buy versus sell activity and can help traders determine market direction, trend strength, support and resistance areas, and much more. The delta refers to the difference between buyers and sellers. So a positive delta is when the purchases exceed the sales, and a negative delta is when sales exceed the purchases. Cumulative delta consolidates the accumulated delta information and then plots it on our charts. By recording and displaying a running count of whether and by how much buyers or sellers are in control, order flow traders like myself can better extrapolate the flow of the market. Delta is an excellent tool for detecting divergence between price and the underlying order flow in the market. When price is making new highs, but delta isn't making new highs, this suggests an underlying weakness to the market and often precedes a pullback or reversal. So now we have uh, an understanding of market internals and the unique insight they provide. I want to briefly walk you through my strategy. By understanding the market context in which we are trading, I'm looking to execute two types of trades, mean reversion in ranging environments and momentum trades in trending environments, all of which are underpinned by the market internals. Every day before the market opens, I plot pivotal support and resistance action areas. They are derived from multi time frame volume profile and volatility analysis. This allows me to avoid engaging the market in areas of heavy rotation or chop. The support and resistance action areas have a dual purpose. They act as entry levels, uh, confirming momentum entries, and they also are used as targets for trades. I also note additional key data from the prior day's price action. These levels are important to define the bias for the day ahead. The previous uh, VPOC or volume point of control. This is the highest volume price from the previous day where buyers and sellers perceive the price to be fair value for the day. I confirm the current market context, uh, looking to see which is the, the dominant side or the, the trend environment within a one to three day look back, a one to three week look back, and a one to three month look back. I also highlight the overnight or the Globex session uh, bias as well. I highlight quantitative probability pay, uh, plays, which are based on the cash or regular trading hours session in relation to the prior day's range, if we're either trading above, below, or within the prior day's range. And based on this, we have some key levels and the probability of price testing these levels over an extended data set. This information is extremely useful for trade entry, exit, and management. Lastly, I note volatility or range analysis, as this helps to inform the current market context. Is the market in balance in relation to the current volatility environment? Equally, we can confirm a market out of balance, and this can inform the bias for the trading day ahead. It also helps us to inform uh, trade execution and trade management. So now we have a, an understanding of the, the strategy or a, an overview of the strategy. What I want to actually do is just jump in uh, to the charts. I'm not going to cherry pick examples here. We're just looking back over the past few weeks. And these are trades that I've taken uh, live in the uh, the trading rooms that I run. And so there's a couple of um, important aspects of this chart template that I just first of all want to explain. The candles you can see on the screen are 15 minute candles. This strategy is a 15 minute momentum strategy that is specifically traded during the cash session of the New York Stock Exchange. So that opens, like Simon said earlier, at 2.30 UK time <coughs> and closes at 9.30 UK time. And so these, uh, these, these 50 minute candles are non-standard trend candles. And what I mean by that is that they are the color of the candle is defined by the daily five period volume weighted average price. The VWAP is the average price of a security that has traded throughout a fixed period based on both volume and price. And it's important because it provides traders with insight into both the trend and perceived value. So I'm only looking to trade in line with the daily trend. The blue moving average you can see is what's referred to as the full session VWAP. 
The gold line is the full session midpoint. So as the cash session opens, we have some immediate market generated information. We know what the daily trend is, and then we know what environment we're actually coming into versus where we're trading with respect to the mid and the VWAP. So let me just walk you through this in real time. So this, this area here, the, the lightly shaded area, um, this, uh, when these data points start appearing on the screen, this highlights when the New York Stock Exchange is open, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. So in this instance, we open the day and we are trading with a bear, as defined by the, uh, the five period look back on the daily time frame. we're in a bearish trend. Uh, we pop higher and uh, we sell off again to the point then that we are trading below the midpoint for the current day's range and below uh, the VWAP, the volume weighted average price for the current day. And we know now because the candles have flipped to red that we're trading below the daily volume weighted average price as well. So our trade as we come down into the support is to play a break of the primary support zone and we're targeting the secondary support zone. More than often than not, we're using between a 10 or a 12 point stop depending upon volatility. And that 10 point stop represents a 1% account risk for me. Other members, other people I trade with adjust their risk accordingly. But for me, 10 points equals a 1% uh, account equity risk. So we're, tr we're taking an entry here through the 46.75 area, and we are targeting a move down into 46.26. So we've got a 21 point target to the downside, price trades through. And most importantly, as, as the trade triggers, we take it. We move to the internals. We have a negative tick distribution. So for the majority of the day, the tick has been trading below the zero line. We have a negative AD line trading below zero and trending down. We have a negative breath reading trading below zero and trending to the downside. And we have negative delta as trading below this midpoint of the Bollinger Bands. So that, that trade there has all the confirmations we require. That's what I would refer to as the triple A plus setup. We're trading... Uh, on the bearish side from a daily perspective, we're trading below full session mid, below the full session VWAP. We have negative market internals across the board, and that gives us the green light to trade that to the downside. The next day into the next session, we don't get a signal. Following day here, we do get a signal. We have um, bullish daily trend as highlighted by the green candle. We're trading above the full session mid and above the full session VWAP. We have a positive tick distribution. We have positive AD line. We have breath that's um, sitting on the zero line, but we have positive delta. And one of the rules for the strategy, I'm not going to go into all the rules in detail here. We'd, we'd be here for a while. But essentially, we have to have three out of these four internals supporting the, tre the trend direction in which we're trading. And one of them has to be the delta. So in this instance, we get the go ahead to go long uh, through the primary resistance here at 46.80. And our target is the secondary resistance zone. Doesn't trigger until uh, into the following day. And there you can see another 18 points of upside or a 1.83 uh, risk to reward ratio. We're using that 10 point stop again. Following day here, we get uh, bullish daily trend. We're trading above the full session mid, above the full session VWAP. We have positive tick distribution. We have AD line, which is just positive. Uh, we have negative breath, but we have, importantly, positive delta. So we get that the trade is, is, a, is a go. It's, uh, it's not triple A, but it's, it is, it's certainly a, uh, a valid trade. And in this instance, we trade higher briefly, uh, but ultimately roll over. And so we take that 10-point stop and move on to the next day. No trade in the following session. Here we come into the day bullish. But the market reverses strongly and we get a uh, trade below the uh, full session mid, below the full session VWAP. We have negative tick, negative breath, negative AD and negative delta. And so that is a valid short through the primary uh, primary support zone. And again, we just trade down into the secondary secondary, uh, sorry, secondary support zone for a, a 10 point gain there. No trade the following session. Coming into the next session, we open up. We have a bullish daily trend. We're trading above the VWAP, above the full session mid. We have a positive tick distribution, positive AD line, positive breath, and importantly, positive delta. So that triggers us in for a long trade through the primary uh, resistance zone there, 47.25.
and up into the secondary resistance at 47.40 for a 16-point gain or a 1.6 R2R. Following day, no trade. Next day, we get a long setup here. We have positive tick, positive AD line, positive breath, positive delta, and we get the uh, the bullish flip here in terms of the daily trend, and we are trading well above the VWAP and the full session mid. And so again, we're targeting that uh, secondary resistance zone. Doesn't trigger in the cash session, but in the overnight session, the trade plays out for a 15 point, uh, 15 point gain there or 1.93 risk to reward ratio. Next two sessions were not, were not traded. Uh, this session here, no trade triggered because although we were breaking uh, resistance here, we had a negative daily trend, so there's nothing for us to do on that day. Into this session here, we have a bearish daily trend. We open up trading below the full session mid, below the VWAP. We have negative tick distribution, negative AD line, negative breath, and negative delta. So that gives us the go-ahead to play for the break of the primary support there. And that takes us from the 45.76 down into uh, the 45.63 there for a 13-point gain. Following session here, we open up. We are bullish originally for the day, trade into the resistance zone, but roll over and come back down. The daily trend flips bearish. Uh, we've got neg we're trading below the full session mid, below the full session VWAP. We trade into primary support. And at that point, we've got all the internals bearish. And so that gives us the go ahead to get short there. And we actually trade pretty quickly down into the, uh, the fourth. Uh, support zone for the day so 35 points of profit to play for there following day no trade because although we break primary resistance we've got a we've got a daily uh, bearish trend so there's nothing for us to do for that session come into the following session cash session opens we roll over back through full session mid full session vwap the daily trend is bearish what are the internals telling us well tick is weak ad line is weak breath is weak and most importantly of all so too is the delta and so that triggers a short trade through primary support there at the 45.39 area down into the secondary support at 45.05 so about 34 points of profit there on the downside or a 3.38 risk to reward ratio trade coming into this session we are uh, we're bearish as we open up but we flip um bullish here into the break of the primary resistance we have Positive tick, positive AD line, positive breath, positive delta. So that triggers us in there on the long side. Now, in the if if I was just cherry picking these, I could easily just say that was a winning trade. It actually wasn't because although we got that break, we did get some consolidation there, and the ten point stop just got taken out before the trade ran off in the direction anticipated. So what I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that you know this is a, an extremely robust trading strategy, but as with all trading strategies, nothing works 100% of the time. And so it's important to have the discipline just to take the stops and move on to the next session uh, with, uh, with this approach. So heading into the next session, we open up above the full session mid, above the full session VWAP, a very positive trend in terms of the daily trend environment. So we play the break of primary resistance through the 46.66, up through secondary resistance, and, uh, and actually trade that one up into the, uh, the third resistance zone, which, uh, which offered 39 0.5 points of upside or a 3.95 risk to reward ratio. Whoops, I want to move that. No trades there. No trades there. Let's see when the next one comes. So the next one actually was yesterday. Um, we had a, we opened up bearish yesterday. We tested up into the full session mid of VWAP. We, uh, we found a rejection there, rolled over, and we actually got, uh, we got a short signal through the, uh, the support there, 46.11, down into the 45.97 area. Uh, so that was on this 15-minute strategy, that would have given you um, a nice 13 and a half points profit there. I actually, we, this is the 15-minute strategy. What I'm going to do now, as opposed to just walking through um, example after example of this, I'm actually going to jump into um, the live charts and um and share with you uh today's analysis and i'll actually just talk you through yesterday's trade because 
um, as I shared with the, the trading group, there, uh, there's an important level that, that is basically marked each day in these in this futures contract. And it's called the initial balance. And some people look on uh, the 15 minute, the opening 15 minute swing, the opening 30 minute swing. But more often than not, everyone's looking at the opening hourly range. And um, yesterday in the, the live trade room, we took the break of the uh, the opening range here because we had uh, bearish internals. And we had a bearish trend day. We're trading below the full session mid, below the full session BWAP. And so that trade actually <coughs> offered 15 points of profit to the downside, playing a, a tighter break there of the uh, of the initial balance. So um, as I said, uh, you well, as you can hopefully see now, just look, I'm, again, not cherry picking, just looking back over the past few weeks of trade, you can see how uh, this trade, this, this strategy is extremely consistent and robust. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, I run... Uh, two strategy groups for Tickmill. Firstly, we have a, a closed Facebook group where on a daily basis, I post my pre-market plan for the New York cash trading session. This plan highlights the context for the day ahead and the key levels where I'm looking to engage the market for that session. I also share some additional insights along with some institutional research and the plan is posted every day into, uh, into the group here. You can see it's, a, it's on average about a three to four minute video where I highlight the session ahead. I also, most importantly, and this is, uh, this is for education purposes, I also review the prior day's plan versus how the price action played out. This is so that you can, it, it, it's basically total transparency. I'm not, you know, there are days when this, when the strategy loses, um, but more often than not, the, the, it's winning days and the winning days far exceed the losing days in terms of the fact that we're only risking 10 points on the downside where we can often get 30 or 40 points on the upside. So uh, that's posted every day prior to the, the cash session open. I'll post the link into the, the chat uh, towards the end. Uh, all you have to do is request access to that and you can access the, uh, the daily trade plan. I also post some institutional insights and observations that are, uh, that are useful. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is basically walk you through what I'm looking to do for today's session. So we just go right back to the basics here where the cash session has just opened. We're getting the opening prints here in terms of the, uh, the tick, the AD line and the breadth and the, uh, the delta. And so for me today, um, what we wanna be cognizant of is the fact that we are heading into this FOMC meeting tonight. So the light, the more, more likely than not, my trading for today is going to be, uh, going to be post that event. And what I've highlighted here are the levels where I'm looking to engage. So let's just review the basics. We're trading below, uh, this is on the five, this is the five minute momentum strategy. The one we were just looking at was the 50 minute, but the principles are all the same. It just moves a bit quicker. So with respect to today's session, <coughs> we are looking at a bearish daily trend as highlighted by the red trim, trend candles. We've, we're opening up at or just below the full session mid and below the full session VWAP. So what we're anticipating is we'd be looking out to see, do we get weak internals across the board? And at the moment, we've actually got a positive AD line, a positive tick. Uh, we have negative delta and we have a breadth that is, is flatlining. So in this instance, this immediately tells me there is nothing for me to do here at the moment because we've got mixed signals from the internals. And what often happens when we get those mixed signals is that the market is in a chop and heavy rotation zone. So at that point, I just need to stand aside because there is nothing, there is no edge for me at that environment. You know, there are algorithms that obviously trade within this zone, but they can react far faster than a human. So there is no edge for me here. So I'm waiting now to, for some market generated information. And when I talk about market generated, rated information. What I want to see is, do we start to trade meaningfully below the VWAP and the mid? And do these internals roll over and go negative? If so, what I'll be watching to see is, where do we get that opening swing low and swing high for the first hour of trade? Because statistically, there's a 97% chance of breaking either the initial balance high or the initial balance low. So in this instance, if we get an opening swing, that creates a low and we pull back into range, the first trading opportunity for me today, if the internals all start to head in the, the same direction, will be playing a break of the opening hours low, targeting the initial support zone. If we get through there and through yesterday's low, then we're looking for a move down into the 45.92 area as the next downside target. 
So that, as, as I open up and look at this chart for this session today, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Alternatively, I could, there's nothing for me to do on the long side until we trade above 46.67. So for me, the only focus as I come into today versus the rules of this strategy are I, I have to be looking on the short side of the trade. If we can get back through 46.67, and the internals all continue to tick up and delta's positive, then the first opportunity on the long side will be playing a break of 46.82.75. And my target for that trade would be 46.98. So you can see here by uh, having these, these rules in place that are, you know, they're not complex rules. It's very simple. Most of it is color, color, um, color coded. So it's very straightforward to follow. What people find, I think, difficult to do is just consistently apply them because there are days when there aren't any setups. And so you have to have the discipline to be able to just stand back and wait for the next setup. So at the moment, those are the, for, for me today, that's the plan. Um, and this is something I would have recorded. Uh, yet, if I review yesterday's plan, we came into the day bearish and I was looking for a break of primary support to trade down into secondary support. And that trade played out as I've highlighted before. So I'm not going to go back over that again. Um, but this is essentially what I would be sharing um, in the pre-market plan today, the key levels, uh, the reasons why I wouldn't be looking to, uh, to go long until we trade back through the daily volume weighted average price. So that flips the daily trends bullish and gives us momentum then to the upside. And we have the key break levels, the structural break levels that we know if those areas are broken, that should increase volatility and we should trade to our next target zone. So that's the uh, that's the, the plan I'm looking to implement for today. Um, before, I, uh, before I wrap this up, I just want to um, highlight the second group that I run that I mentioned uh, from the beginning, which is the, uh, the tick mill uh, Telegram Futures Group. This is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Telegram Group is a, a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share my chart template and proprietary indicators along with in-depth insights, analysis and trades. I also live stream the opening hour of the cash session where traders can essentially look over my shoulder and watch me trade in real time uh, as I dissect the market and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These live trade sessions will act as a platform helping you to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets. And most importantly, the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. I'd just like to finish up by quickly sharing some thoughts of the uh, of members who are... Oh, hi all, my name is Amy and I have been a TechMill Futures client for just over two months. Hello, my name is Jonathan and I'm a TechMill client. And I'm also a TechMill Futures Trading Strategy Group member and I've been doing this for the last six months. Hello, I'm Thomas Filek and I'm sending out this quick message regarding the TechMill Trader Group, which I've been a part of for about three weeks now. Hi everyone, my name is Adam. I trade with TickMill for several months. Hello, my name's Jamie. I'm a TickMill client and I've been part of the Futures Trading Group for two months now. Uh, Patrick Manali's live trading sessions are fantastic uh, to watch him trade and he shares his observations and trades in the Telegram group and just how he frames the market the accuracy is just phenomenal and the results really do speak for themselves. I couldn't recommend it enough to anybody that's looking to benefit from improved market insights, benefiting from unique quantitative tools and uh, trading the live New York session with an expert and being able to ask questions to improve your own knowledge within the team. I had a bit of a research and joined the uh, trading strategy group uh, with head trader Patrick Munnerley. And uh, at the moment, I'm really enjoying the mini features. Uh, Patrick's got a Telegram group, which he posts uh, throughout the day. Uh, so, so, so far, I have done an investment of £900, uh, and I've managed to turn £900 into £3,150. I'm glad to be in the group. Uh, Patrick showed us live trading. He explained everything clearly, uh, gives a lot of information. He is a professional trader and mentor 
I always jump on the live sessions with Patrick Munley. They're great, couldn't recommend them enough. Uh, the way he uses the market internals and quantity based data to frame and execute trades is brilliant. It's quite scary how accurate it is. Um, but yeah, you get to ask questions in real time. Uh, if you want to start trading at a high level, choose him. Uh, 100, 100% I recommend it. It's the perfect place for any trader looking to grow. An absolute enjoyment being part of this group. You can ask whatever questions you like. Uh, Patrick's always there uh, on hand to uh, answer any questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question, um, which I've asked. Uh, so yeah, come and join us. Which is amazing. If you want to trade futures professionally, I thoroughly recommend that you start with the uh, Futures Tip Mill Trading Group with Patrick. Thank you. So if you are looking to take your trading to the next level, uh, do get involved. I 110% recommend it. Right. Thank you.